Hello and welcome back to Fire Emblem Engage. Now you might be expecting a Fel Xenolog episode today, however we're going to be doing something slightly different. Last time we failed on the final mission of Fel Xenolog and we failed essentially because we didn't have the tools that we needed to complete the mission. Now if you don't know about the Fel Xenolog thing, I'm not going to spoil anything story wise, I'm going to purely talk about it from a, um, from a mechanical standpoint. What it does is it takes away your ability to level, right? Every character has been cho has been leveled to a certain level in a class that has been chosen by the game. Now, why is this significantly different from the base game? Well, in the base game, you can choose characters that you want to improve more. You can lean into their strengths. You can get them in certain classes that give them certain growths, which mean that they're better at doing certain things and then you get the emblem and you can use the emblem to amplify those good things that they're good at and then, then you can basically keep spiraling that and that gets you your strategy that you can then use to complete the harder missions. In this one, they've taken away your ability to choose your level and your class, which wouldn't necessarily be a problem, except for the fact that they left you with the ability to choose your own emblems. Now, what's the issue with that? Well, it means that all the emblems that we've got are set up for a different class, right? On a lot of our units. And a lot of the stuff that we were doing in the base game doesn't work on the final mission of the Fel Xenolog because we're not set up correctly. Now, I do have a plan for what I'm gonna do. And I think we may try some, perhaps, cheesier strats in order to defeat the final mission of the Fel Xenolog. But, in order to do that, or even to do it properly, we need one thing. And that thing is in the bottom right of this screen. No, I'm not talking about relay tickets. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about bond fragments. Now, how do you gain bond fragments? Well, basically every single time you do a mission, you get the opportunity to fish and you get the opportunity to go and fly. Doing both of those gets you bond fragments which then allows you to upgrade your emblems, which then allows you to, you know, power up different emblems and level up all that sort of stuff. But because we don't have any bond fragments, really, we can't really do that. So, the goal of this episode today is to get us into a situation where we can start generating some bond fragments. Now, what's the roadblock for that? Well, if we're going to be generating uh, all of these bond fragments and we're going to be doing mission after mission, the other thing that resets with each mission is this. This thing right here. The thing that allows you to get supports between characters. I think you can see where this is going. Because that resets every single time we do a mission, in theory, if I'm going to go and do a bunch of grinding off camera, I really, really want this to be used every single time. But we currently have an absurd number of supports sitting and waiting. So what I want to do today is go through all of those supports and then I can do some grinding. If we have enough bond fragments, we'll do a Fels analog episode next. If we don't, well, when we've got enough supports, we're going to do another support episode. And that's basically the plan. I mean, it's not ideal. Obviously, I would love to just be able to complete the Fel Zen log and go, fantastic, we've done every um, battle in the game, we're good to go. But we got some more work to do, so we're going to do some more work. Right. Oh, there is actually one other way of gaining bond fragments. I should mention that. The other way, if you don't know, of gaining bond fragments is all the way over here. And this is um, the achievements menu. Oh, actually, there you go. Got some bond fragments there. So, in the achievements menu, uh, you can get bond fragments for doing certain things, for deploying people certain times, and we can actually get all of those, potentially, in these missions as well. So, uh, you get some missions, I believe, in castles, which are not missions even on uh, classic mode, which kill your units if they die. So, in theory, we can deploy units to those missions, get the rewards in terms of bond fragments, even though uh, that unit may just die on turn one. So that's kind of useful for us here. That's something to think about. Do we get bond fragments, by the way, when we do donations? I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember. 
you might. I think some of these might give you stuff. I also want to do a bunch more donations because um, we're going to earn a ton of money from doing skirmishes. So, you know, it seems like it'll be a good idea. Now, the only thing we are going to miss out on each time if I do a bunch of these off camera is doing the wake up event. Uh, I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with uh, not necessarily doing the wake up event every time, but we'll see. We'll see where things end up. We'll see how we can do it. What I might do with the wake up events is I might record them separately and then we'll just do them all in one go. I don't know. We'll see. I'll need to think about it. Anyway, let's start with the support extravaganza and let's find somebody to get stuff with. Actually, before we do that, we got any bond stuff to do? No. Okay. So the support extravaganza. Um, let's... Hmm. I'm deciding whether I want to do it with the person who I've been getting all the supports with, like Vander has a ton of them, or whether I want to do it like this at the top. I'm going to go, I'm going to do Gold Mary's ones with anybody who have Gold Mary's with, then we'll do Pandreos. And then if we have, it might lead to us not just doing the same person over and over again. We can do some Amber and then some Vander. I think I want to do the same one each time. I want to go all of the Vander ones, just so we can see how Vander um, is portrayed across different people. And that'll be interesting. So, let's start with the A support between Fram and Vander. All right, Fram, what is it this time? I presume there has been some trouble with the task I assigned you. Wrong! <laughs> I'll take care of that in a sec. Well then? Here, this is for you. It's my way of thanking you for, you know, expecting the best of me. What is this? A pack of... frickets? Yep, short for Fram tickets. Think of them as a big sorry for all the grief I've caused you. If you're ever feeling tired, or there's a chore you don't want to do, or whatever, use a fricket! Day or night, no matter what it is, I'll zip right over and help you out. Fram, while I have no children of my own, I imagine this is how it feels to be a proud parent. Thank you. I will be sure to use these frickets sparingly. They are quite precious, after all. <laughs> you got that right. As for me, I'll keep trying my best to make you proud. I'm gonna make mistakes sometimes, but with your help, I know I can get better. So keep teaching me to be the very best steward I can be. Of course. Though you appear to be well on your way already. Okay, so we started off with a fairly... fairly neutral uh, proud father vander well not father but you get what i'm meaning this is kind of the f um role he's playing in this in this scenario right let's or i guess proud mentor that's a better way of putting it let's go for fra uh, for vander and gold mary let's see if this is uh unhinged hello vander whatever you need i am sure it can wait until i've finished my knitting that what a line. I just wanted to thank you again for fixing my sleeve the other day. Oh, I happen to be passing by. Anyone else in my position would have done the same. Mm, but you were the one who stopped to help me. So it's you who gets my thanks. May I ask what it is you're working on? Lace, I do not know what will become of it yet. I will sort that out when it's done. I'm sure you could make all kinds of accessories that would <laughs> accentuate my natural charisma. Gold Mary? Are you hitting on Vander? An accessory? Good idea. I admire you, Vander. You're strong, but you also have a delicate touch. Oh, I think that's lovely. I was attendant to Queen Lumera for a long time. The job required me to be proficient in sewing, cooking, cleaning, all manner of housework. I consider housework to be among my greatest skills, but you may actually have me beat. <laughs> With all your talents, I imagine you were quite the charmer in your youth. Not particularly. I was far too devoted to my vocation to have time for that sort of thing. I see. <sighs> if I give this to you, Will you go on your way? You're offering me the lace? Thank you, but I wouldn't want to deprive the person it's intended for. It is not intended for anyone. 
I only knit to occupy my hands while my mind does its work. I'm just imagining Vander's room is just filled with things he's knitted, and he's like, What do I do with all of these? I have just knitted, you know, a ton of sweaters, but yet I do not have anyone to give it to. And then, you know, so on and so forth. Hilarity ensues. Alright, Vander Pandreo, it's time for, um, talk about faith, I'd assume. Thank you for coming to the party today, Sir Vander. You really elevated the proceedings. Pandreo, did my ears deceive me, or were you and the other guests howling? Oh, don't worry about that. Just a thing we do when the spirit moves us. We were riveted by your fascinating stories about Queen Lumera. Well, that's good, but really, what bizarre gathering did I witness? You spoke of pious songs and dances. I was expecting something rather solemn. Instead, it was a circus. Everyone hopping about and yelping like rabid dogs. Could you even hear what I was saying over all the commotion? Of course. That was why we got so excited. We were celebrating your stories in our bodies and souls. Hmm, is that so? Call me old-fashioned, but I usually celebrate stories by listening to them. I did notice you didn't dance with us. Of course not. This creaky back of mine would snap if I cavorted around like that. Still, I appreciate your open-mindedness. In the early days, some followers would complain. Did they now? Yes. People in Seoul don't tend toward religion. The church used to be rather... Um, ill-attended. Then I had an idea that turned things around. To make church more like a party. He does not sound impressed. Exactly! If you want people to listen, you have to speak in a language they understand. You worked hard to rebuild your church. I apologize for calling it a circus. Though unorthodox, your methods have clearly brought in new worshippers. I appreciate that. That is high praise coming from you, Sir Vander. Yes, well... Perhaps more flexible thinking is just what the world needs right now. Awesome. Well, it turns out he does uh, appreciate it. And now it's time for Vander Mavier. Now, remember, with all of Mavier's supports, they have a little twist because you can only get Mavier very late into the story. So, although there's supports about Mavier, and this is probably going to be about protecting people, as Vander is a protector of the Divine Dragon while Mavier was a protector of um, Vale, um, this will also potentially be an opportunity for us to see how Vander feels about the later parts of the story, because he wasn't really in it, although he was more in it than other characters, but you get the idea. So let's see what they have to say. <laughs> Sir Vander, you are following me. Explain yourself. You are a valiant guardsman, alert at all hours. The people could ask for no better protector. Keeping an eye on me? Oh, just the one. It's nothing personal. Are you afraid I might switch allegiances again? I wasn't saying that, no. You were thinking it, though. Alas, not everyone is convinced you are trustworthy as of yet. Understandable. There is much for which I must atone. I hope I might earn your trust, yet I understand your continued need for surveillance. It's not really surveillance, per se. I'm just watching from afar. Yes, that describes surveillance. I am working diligently, so I may be worthy of everyone's trust. Working hard is all well and good, but trust is a precious commodity. Harder to earn than lose. Trust is a precious commodity. So I am aware. Vander hates me as well. Quite understandable, given my actions towards Queen Lumera. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Be nice to see how that one develops. And that is all of Vander's. I think that was good, actually, doing them all in one go, because then you get to see a little bit of how Vander responds to different people. He's very kind of closed off. As in a little bit. Like, he's willing to accept other things, but he's kind of like, hmm, but I'd kind of prefer if things were just 
the way they were. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, next up we have Chloe, who we have a ton of supports with. All the starting supports, so we'll see how these go. Chloe and Marin. Kind of think what they would talk about. Chloe wants to be like a. Um, she kind of wants to live in a fairy tale. She likes foul food. While Marin um, likes small animals? I have no idea. Go talk to each other. Oh, hello, Marin. Well, hello, Chloe. You're looking beautiful as always. You know, I saw these blossoms and immediately thought of you. One beauty deserves another. I hope you like them. Wow, that's really sweet of you, Marin. You're so charming and cool, like a knight out of a fairy tale. Me? Charming and cool? <laughs> You're much too kind. Hey, I happen to have some sweets. They're delicious. Care to share them with me? Aw, what a nice surprise. I would love to. Today is shaping up to be a fine day indeed. Let's sit over there with the nice view. We can share your sweets and my pickled fish guts. <clears throat> Excuse me? Sorry, did you say pickled guts? I bet you they'll go perfectly with the sweets. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Honestly, the combination sounds fairly wretched. You never know until you try, though. Perhaps just one bite, if you insist. But if I get an upset stomach, you have to take care of me. I'd be happy to. Shall we brave the unknown together, Marin? Okay. So they have just a perfectly happy and normal friendship apart from the pickled fish guts. Weird. Okay. Louis and Chloe. Um. Yeah, they're both going to talk about the fact that they work for... This is the problem with... The, the game being so long, and my memory being so bad. Saline! She's right below! Because they both work for her, they're going to talk about her. Louie, were you watching me again? Indeed I was. You and your whole coterie of ladies. Oh no, it's about Louis's um, inability to be normal, and the fact he stares at people. Of course. The sight of you all together pleased me to no end. The way you talk, it sounds like you were taking in fine art at a gallery. To me, there is no greater art. The finest galleries fall far short by comparison. There are so many subtleties and nuances to be seen that I could do so all day. That's really the whole reason you do it. It's no different than appreciating a beautiful landscape. I sit quietly and let it soothe me. I see no harm in people watching, and I'm sure you of all people must agree. Yeah. When you put it that way, I guess I do. I've seen the way you drop everything to moon over any especially picturesque scenes. Like a princess and her knight, a prince and his servant. Oh, or a pegasus and a maiden. So many lovely scenes straight out of a fairy tale. I adore them all. You and I are kindred spirits in that respect. Here's an idea. Why don't you and I have a little viewing party sometime? We can stand at a remove and point out scenes that catch our respective eyes. That sounds like fun. I'm game if you are. Okay. He's recruited someone else into his weird staring cult. Alright, it's Chloe and Saline. They're gonna talk about tea. That's all she talks about, as in the one on the right. It's gonna be all about tea. I already know it. Oh, hello, Princess Saline. You look radiant as ever. Thank you, Chloe. We have some free time today. How do you intend to spend it? I'm going to have a tea party. That's a good question. Why don't we take a ride on your Pegasus to a nearby tea farm? Pretty close. I'd be thrilled. Mind you, we don't have that much free time. I doubt it would be like it was before. If only I could return to those days of whiling away the hours with you. Princess Saline? Oh well, let's do something else. When this war ends, I'll take you wherever you like, as often as you like. We'll visit all the tea farms in the world, and we can pass the time taking in beautiful landscapes while sipping delicious tea. Now, doesn't that sound lovely? It does indeed. Wonderful idea, Chloe. I shall hold you to it when the time comes. And I will be happy to oblige. 
Okay, cool. Citrine and Chloe. This is gonna be about, like, they're gonna have a love- This is gonna be the same as Marin. They're gonna have a lovely time, and then Chloe's gonna be like, You want my pickled fish guts? Let's see. Why, hello, Chloe. Fancy meeting you here. Hi there, Citrine. I'm just here picking up some lunch. You can only get it at this street stall, but the taste is worth the trip. It's my favorite. Really? If it's as delicious as you say, I'd like to try some for myself. Here, I'll treat you. Excuse me, sir. I'll take everything you have, please. The whole stock? Ooh. Don't fret about the money. This way, if we have extra, we can share with the others. Thank you for wrapping all of that, sir. Here's a little more gold for your trouble. Huh? Are these? It's folk food. Salt pickled fish guts in this case. Oh, of course. Oh, how, uh, charming. Oh, sorry. I love this stuff, but it might be too much for you to handle. No, no. One mustn't show prejudice toward food without trying it first. Here, Chloe, your portion. Wow, you're letting me have almost all of it. Thank you so much. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have somewhere to be. Must be important. You look pretty serious all of a sudden. It is important. Well, to me it is. Take care. Will do. And thanks for treating me to a heaping helping of my favorite folk food. Yes, I think Citrine's thing that she has to do is not be anywhere near the fish food. Eh, uh, guts. Okay. Next one we have is Chloe and Amber. Now, this one, Amber is all about wanting to be like, you know, a hero, a proper hero with tales are written about. Chloe likes fairy tales. I can see where this one's going to link in somewhere. Either that or it's going to be about alpacas. Chloe, listen up. I have something that's going to blow your mind. <laughs> What's got you so riled up? You've heard of the Fountain of Youth, right? You know, from those fairy tales you love? Oh, those are some of the best stories. But why do you ask? <laughs> Brace yourself, I got my hands on the only map to its hidden location. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yes, literally. Especially since the Fountain of Youth isn't real. Why would it be on a map? <laughs> that's exactly it. That's why this is so amazing. If it doesn't exist, then why do I have a map that shows its precise location? So, what do you say, Chloe? Want to join me on a quest to find the Fountain of Youth? You know all about this fairy tale stuff. If we team up, we'll be unstoppable. Sure, I'll tag along. Maybe on the way, we'll see some nice landscapes right out of a fairy tale. Really? Great! Thanks. I can't wait. Let's go find that fountain. Chloe here is just like, yeah, it's not real. I'll, I'll come with you. Like, it sounds like a nice day out, but we're not finding the, fant uh, the fountain of youth. They're Fram and Chloe. This could be anything. This would be a very early support in the game, so... I have no idea. <sighs> this mission is taking so much longer than I thought. By the time I'm done, it'll be too late. What's the rush, Chloe? Oh, do you have a hot date tonight? Nope, there's this folk food stall I was hoping to visit. A folk food stall? Oh, it's fish guts again. Yeah, I have a thing for local foods made with unusual ingredients. But the shops that sold them were already rare. And the war has made them almost non-existent. I heard there was a food stall opening today, so I was hoping to check it out. If it's that important to you, I can go in your place. I'll be your personal shopper. You do that for me? Sure. I'm not so busy that I can't make a slight detour on the errands I was running anyway. Whoa, thanks. I think I'll take you up on that. So, what can I get for you? It's roasted snake meat between two buns. They call it a snake sandwich. Oh. Why would anyone... Folk food is always tied to local traditions. Eating it is like taking a bite of history. That's what makes it so great. Oh. Huh. I think that makes sense. From a certain point of view. Anyway, I'll be back in two shakes with your sandwich of snakes. Here's some money. Buy one for yourself, too, so we can eat them together. Well, we'll see how that goes later. Okay. Chloe. 
very much has the things that she's interested in. Next, we have Clan, who has one support with Fram. All right, well, on you go. There are a lot of people here. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the point. This is our chance to tell everyone how great the Divine Dragon is. Yeah, but... Come on, we both worked so hard on these, we gotta let the people see them. Or, instead, we could quietly put them down over there and... Okay, showtime. I'll start us off. Listen up, everybody. My brother has a real important announcement to make. Oh. Psst. Clan, that was your cue. You're the one who said people would think we're weirdos if we didn't introduce ourselves. I'm just, uh, kind of nervous. Everyone is staring at us. This is a real mess. Fine. I'll introduce both of us, okay? Oh, uh, okay. All right, then. We are Clan and Fram, the 33rd Stewards of the Divine Dragon. We will answer all your burning questions about the Divine One with these lovely handbound. Stop. Please stop. This was a bad idea. What? I can't do this. There are too many people. It's embarrassing. They're all gonna think we're weird. Who even cares about the Divine One's shoe size? Yeah, but what is it? Is it like, you know? Are, are they big or small? We do. Oh, I feel like such a wimp. I thought I could be a steward. I'm not even cut out to be in the fan club. Sorry, Fram. Clan, wait! I find this really funny because in a previous support that we had with Vander, like in this one, is doing the thing that Fire Emblem sometimes does. Where he's already, like, you know, had his um, path in life affirmed. He's got a bunch of confidence. And in this one, he's like, I can't handle it. Can't handle it. He he's reset back to zero. Anyway. Now it's time for Amber. We have some Amber supports. Amber Mavier. I don't know what they have to talk about. But we'll find out. <laughs> Mavier? Are you still on guard duty? It's so late. I'll take over so you can get some rest. There is no need. The lateness of the hour is not of any concern. Really? Wow. I've got to hand it to you. Why is that? You've been standing at attention for who knows how long. Don't you need a break? Keeping guard is more important than resting. Whoa! You can't say that! You've got to take a real break! There is no need. Resting is a waste of time. Okay, you're starting to scare me. How do you shake off your fatigue? That's my secret. I always have fatigue. Fatigue is no issue. Essentially, yes. What? What are you, one of the corrupted or something? Not in this timeline. Enough joking around. It's my shift, so I'll take over from here. For real. No, thank you. Oh, come on, man. I didn't want to do this, but I'll have to relieve you by force. Uh-huh. Yeah. What is wrong? I think I pulled a muscle. <laughs> it looks like you're the one who needs to rest. Ooh. Little, uh, bit of humor in from him, from the otherwise stoic, uh, Mavier. Now we have Seedol and Amber. I don't know. I'm expecting unhinged from this, though. Very unhinged. What? Really? Here? Am I reading this right? Seedol! What's going on? Is everything okay? Just doing a bit of fortune telling. The cards say that a man foretold by legend will soon appear. Whoa! A man foretold by legend? Where? When? What else did the cards say? Well, this legendary man is young, gregarious, energetic, and rather handsome. Hmm. Diamond, gotta be. Oh, that profile sounds an awful lot like me. Uh, if only my name was Greg. Man, so close. Ah, <laughs> uh, but he's also a fool. Oh, that can't be me then. <laughs> Poor Greg. Hmm. This fabled fellow also has a powerful connection to a certain animal. The alpaca? Alpacas? 
No way! That has to be me! I am the legendary Greg! You're the figure my cards are heralding? I guess so. But what does that mean? Am I supposed to do something? Well, according to the cards, sometime in the near future, you are going to be a savior. Oh. Whoa! A savior? Me? That's the best! How near is the near future going to be? Uh, that remains a bit foggy. But never fear. I'll give you a shout as soon as things are clear. Got it. I'll keep my ears perked up and my eyes pointed in both directions, just like an alpaca. Good for you. That was a little unhinged. And now we have Panette and Amber. I don't know, just let it play. We'll see. Uh, I have to check that place out, but it's too dangerous to go by myself. Pardon me, but I couldn't help overhearing. Are you planning a trip somewhere? Listen to this, Panette. There are rumors about a nearby forest that hides an old mansion. Oh, I have never heard of this place. Me neither. I just learned about it. According to local legends, a famous knight lived there. He was a brave and noble warrior who fought as if he would never die. Right up until he died. Ah. The very next day, people say the knight's spirit could be seen wandering inside the mansion. Oh, <gasps> how extraordinary. Poor guy doesn't know he died. Now he roams his own halls as a shadow of his former self. Would that not make him a ghost? Oh, huh. Well, if you want to get all technical about it, then sure. Why, I should like to see this place for myself. I adore ghosts. You do? Great! Let's check it out together. <sighs> That'll be way, way easier than checking it out all by myself. Even Prince Diamant turned me down, and he's not afraid of anything. Then pray bring me along. I can think of nothing that would make me happier. Yes, that settles it. Just don't blame me if you get scared out of your big pointy boots. All right. Amber and Panette and Ghost Hunters. Didn't see it coming. Is that all the ones we have? I believe it is. Okay. So we are now set up and ready for me to go out and do a ton of uh, skirmishes, earn some money, Go and get some more supports and generally get ourselves all set up for advancing where we are. Now, one of the other reasons I did this episode is so that we actually had an episode coming out so that people actually knew that the series was not dead. Just to confirm, the series is not dead, it just involves a little bit of grinding and I'm going to try and put out some of these episodes a little bit more consistently than we were putting the other ones, I think I've said that before, but I'm going to try and do that so that one, people know the series isn't dead, and two, so that uh, there's actually some pressure on me to grind, because there's a lot of grinding that needs done, and you need to do it. So, that's the plan. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to do. I don't think there is. The only other thing that we're going to do in future ones is in future ones we're going to have money, so we're going to go buy donations. We're also going to go and do some arena stuff to level people up, in that we also need to level up a bunch of characters with certain emblems. I know roughly what these emblems are, but I'm going to double check and make sure that I have a better idea before we actually start leveling them. But essentially, a lot of this comes down to one specific emblem. So this emblem, I think, is currently on... I'm trying to remember who has it. It's currently on Veil. So, essentially, the thing that allows you to kind of cheese the final mission is Reprisal. So, if a unit's HP is not full, adds 50% of lost HP to attack. So, why is this so important? Well, what you can do with it is you can add an awful lot of lost HP to an attack. So, for instance... If you were to use this in combination with, say, Roy, who has Holdout, well then, you can have a unit survive with 1 HP, and that would then mean that, let's say it was on Kagetsu, you would then be doing 56 extra damage on your hit, which allows you to bypass certain mechanics in some ways, which is pretty good. 
And the other thing you can then do is you could use um, minor amounts of healing in order to raise your HP above that number and then you can attack again and again and again at very small amounts of HP, but at very large attack numbers. And you can see how that might be valuable. So that's basically the plan. Uh, but to do so, we need a lot of things to set up and to work together, so that's what we're going to do. Um, I did, by the way, see a very funny um, version of this, where somebody was like, how do I heal the smallest amount possible in the game? So what they did is they went and gave, um, I think they, they gave the one that Sea Dog currently has. They gave Micaiah over to, um, I find the character, he's so far down. They gave Micaiah to Boucheron, who I believe has the lowest magic stat in the game, zero, right? So Micaiah with Boucheron, and then they healed with that, which healed the smallest possible amount so that you kept reprisal at the highest possible amount. It's very funny, but uh, I don't know if we're gonna go quite into that level of things, but essentially that's the kind of cheese we're looking at. And to do so, we need a lot of things to change because we don't really have anyone trained in reprisal who is also has like, who also has very high attack. Like um, ideally you do want it on somebody like, if I go back to emblem rings, you want it on somebody like maybe, I think it gets who is fine, but I don't think that was the one I was looking at. I think the one I saw was Panette is really good because if your HP is not at max, it grants extra crit. And then if you have Wrath as well, then you get crit for each HP the unit has lost, meaning that you can get an extra 40 crit. Now, if you're critting, you do three times uh, your weapon damage, plus you get the damage from the um, reprisal and then, then you're actually starting to hit people at a pretty serious amount. So if you can get those combined with some other things, I think the other one is if you can use the Edelgard um, ring. So the Edelgard ring is this one. Uh, this one then gives you a combat art, which allows you to have an extra turn. So having the extra turn means that you can do more attacks. Then you can also on top of that use Dimitri's one, which then gives you extra might on your weapon which then, I think it lets you double the weapons might, so if you double the weapons might and then crit, you're then doing insane amounts of damage, and you can see how stacking and stacking and stacking this goes. You can then also buff yourself up, I think, with Chrom, which uh, then lets you get another plus seven to your stats. You can also then buff yourself with, um, you can also buff yourself then with um, Byleth here, which would then let you get even more to your stats. And then you can use Veronica, which will then give you another turn, which then lets you get even more stats. And yeah, things get very, very, very silly very quickly. So we just need a few things. I need to write these down and work out exactly what we're working towards, but on future ones, we're gonna do some bond conversations uh, towards those. So that's the plan. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and for sticking with the series, and hopefully we'll uh, make some good progress. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.